Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'll be reviewing this fantastic Mobula 7 HD Tiny Whoop from Happy Model. Unless you were hiding under a rock last year, the Happy Model Mobula 7 took everyone by storm. It was the first of an emerging market of great tiny whoops. Now, I've always been fascinated by tiny whoops, usually during the winter, but they always end up disappointing me. They're twitchy and difficult to tune, so they fly smoothly. And because you lack the mass, they obviously don't fly like a 5 inch. But the Mobula 7, Trash Can, Beta FPV 75, and Tiny Hawk were the next gen of tiny whoops, and they fly really well. Now, I'm convinced it's because the filtering in beta flight needed to make them work well has benefited from more efficient code and just simply faster processors. So Happy Model have released this HD version of the Mobula 7, and this uses the Calex Turtle V2 HD camera, a bit like a run cam split, and it's got much larger motors, which really takes it to the next level of whoop. It's a cine whoop. So let's have a quick look at what we've got in the box. You get the usual skimpy little manual, which we're all used to now. And there's a 3S Happy Model branded 300 milliamp hour HV LiPo rated at 30C or 60C burst. And this is the OSD joystick for the Cadex. And you get this extra pack of HQ props, full blade, slightly different to the ones that fitted. A prop removal tool, a screwdriver, and a few spare canopy screws in case you lose one. And this little cable here with an XT30 on it is an adapter, so you can use two 1S LiPos in series if you want, rather than this single pack. The quad itself, uh, this looks great. It's got that sort of Judge Dredd robot drone look to it. I saw some early releases that had a nasty looking 3D printed canopy, but this is a nicely injected molding one. Unlike the original Mobula 7, which had a Crazy B F3 board, this has got the Crazy B F4 and is flashed with Beta Flight 4. Woohoo! I'll go through a full spec on this. At the bottom, we've got the Crazy B F4 Pro V2 all-in-one flight controller, and you can use that on two or three S HV LiPos. And there's a built-in receiver, and you have to order the option you want. You can have either the FR Sky transmitter that supports D8 and D16, and that's non-EU. Fly Sky using the HF HDS and HF HDS 2A protocol. And there's even a DSM2, DSMX version if you're using a Spectrum transmitter. And the camera they've used is the CMOTS Cadex Turtle V2, which will give you 1080p at 60 frames a second. And also, tucked up in here, there's a microphone and there's an OSD as well. The VTX is tucked up inside the top of the canopy, just in there, it's a little triangular board. It's got 40 channels and is switchable between 25 milliwatts and 200 milliwatts. And it's got this RG178 simple wire antenna that clips into the canopy. And this VTX supports smart audio, so you can change the VTX channels, power, and all your beta flight settings using the OSD menu via the transmitter sticks. Just hold half throttle, full left yaw, and full forward pitch on the sticks and the OSD will appear in your goggles. Now, these motors are EX1102 10,000 kV, which are pretty punchy on 3S. And the Crazy B has a built-in 4-in-1 ESC board. You can see the motors plugging in here. Apparently, this has an upgraded MCU. It's the EFM 8BB21. Anyway, it's rated at 5 amps continuous and 6 amps for up to 5 seconds. And it's running BL Heli Rev 
it supports one shot, multi shot, and D shot, and the default that they've set is D shot 600. The CADEX board is squeezed in here, just there, and it makes a neat little build to be honest. The initial setup for this doesn't have auto record turn on, but you can use the start stop button just here to start and stop recording. It's tucked away very tightly. You can just get to it with your thumbnail. If you want to change the VTX channel or power, you can do that with this tiny little button just tucked away in there. And LEDs under the top here show you what channel and what power is selected. It's pretty awkward to use and using the OSD menu in your goggles is the way to go. There's a couple of small clips at the back of the frame here which you could put an LED strip in if you wanted to. So it's quite a packed out little quad. Let's check the weight. It's 47, 46 and a half grams compared to the original Mobula, which is 30 grams. So there's a bit of difference. And I think most of the difference is probably in the Cadex camera, board, and these high power motors. Now, setup should be easy, but I found it was impossible to get this bound in D16 mode, even though the spec says it supports D8 and D16. And remember, the built-in receiver is non-EU, so if you're using a transmitter that's flashed with EU LBT firmware, you'll need to add an external receiver. I think an FR Sky XM Plus might just about fit under that board and between the bottom and the frame there. That was all flown with out-of-the-box PIDs and rates on 3S using this pack. And it flies pretty smoothly, to be honest. But as soon as you start pushing it with hard throttle punches, there's some weird oscillations. Now, I don't think this is actually the tune that's the problem. I tried tuning it out, but I think these mega powerful 10,000 kV motors on 3S are just too much for this flexible frame. Maybe it needs a carbon brace or a small carbon frame to stop it flexing under high loads. I also had a problem with the receiver randomly fail-safing. So I think I'll add an XM Plus receiver to this at a later stage. And the original Mobula 7 frame used to break really easily. And this frame on here looks the same as the V2 version, which is available now. It still flexes, but it doesn't actually break. It's not quite as brittle, but time will tell. And one other thing to watch out for is these battery leads. It pushes the leads onto the edge of the USB connector. And if you're not careful, it'll eventually cut through the wires. Just make sure they're pushed well out of the way when you put the battery in. And lastly, this doesn't have a buzzer, so finding it in long grass is going to be a bit of a problem. Odd, since the standard Mobula 7 has actually got a buzzer fitted under here. 
That's something else that I'll add at a later stage, I think. Although there's a few problems with this quad, I really do like it. On 2 and 3S with a gentle throttle finger, you'll get awesome macro footage that's ready to put straight onto YouTube, 1080p at 60 frames a second. It's not quite ready for full-blown high speed just yet, but I suspect an update will be on the way because I've seen some similar other quads using a simple carbon bottom plate across here. And the component spec and build quality is excellent. It gets a solid 8 out of 10 from me. In part 2, I'll show you how to bind this in D8 mode and my Betaflight setup and the CADX camera settings that give you the best results. Thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then subscribe to the channel for updates. I'll see you next time. Thank you.